Butterworth, Martin O'Neill, Duncan Lyle and Graham McGough, the Jen Butterworth band with South Australia there. Um, you're listening to The Garden Sessions, gardensessions.co.uk, contact podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. It's episode 27, I'm Jack Foster and with me, the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid of folk music. <laughs> I think they wrote it themselves this week. I'm talking of course of Tom Harland and Dave the Angles I've probably got to be Butch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So Angles is the Sundance kid. <laughs> I've never considered you that butch, though, Tom. Angles, what's on the show this um, week? Everything we've normally got. We've got the folky news, we've got the angle, we've got the official garden sessions number one, we've got mm-hmm. the letters bag. Any hints on the chart? You've seen it, obviously. I've seen the chart. It's, nah, it's, no, it's not maybe as exciting as it has been, but it's pretty good. I what? believe you've got a good angle in store. Any I hints? do. I've got a very good angle in store. No, it's a surprise. It's a bit of a particular surprise for you, Tom. Yeah? Tom, our featured artist this week. Our featured artist is Carolyn Anona Scott. Mm. Uh, Great lass who occasionally comes into the Oak, Mm. plays some great tunes. Often catch her on Neil Thompson's sessions. Mm. And I met up with her on Sunday in the Oak. So you'll hear that later on. Um, Tom, the next tune is quite a treat. Oh, the next tune. I'm so looking forward to it. Sandy Denny, Bushes and Briars. i 
Bushes and Briars, Sandy Denny from the album A Box Full of Treasures. And what a treasure indeed. You listen to the Garden Sessions, gardensessions.co.uk, podcast at gardensessions.co.uk, and also um, joined by listeners of Radio Britfolk, radiobritfolk.co.uk. Welcome back again. A lovely organisation that they are. Our regular features still to come Folk and News, Dave Zangle, Official Garden Sessions Download Chart, Letters Bag, and our featured artist this week, Carolyn Anona Scott. That's all, as well as the very best in new song and traditional folk music, though. That is. <laughs> Tom. It's news! It's folk! What is it, Tom? It's the folk in you! Mm-hmm. And the folk in you is brought to you this week, as ever, in association with Paddy Bart's Wee Folk Club. Well, every Sunday night at the Oak, we've got the Wee Folk Club at 8.30, an intimate venue, 30 seats, acoustic. It's a great night out. We've brought some fantastic musicians and uh, singers. Every Sunday night, do come along. 1st of April at the Wee Folk Club, it's the Homemade Jam Bluegrass Band. Homemade Jam's music ranges from the energy of up-tempo bluegrass and old-time tunes to the sweet sound of gospel harmonies. And that's at the Royal Oak in Edinburgh, royal-oak-folk.com. These are the headlines. Chris Drever, Martin Green and Aidan O'Rourke launched the debut album from Lau on Monday the 19th of March under Reveal Records at the Bongo Club in Edinburgh. The garden sessions were there and Angles got some reactions from the crowd as they spilled out from the show. Frank Burkett was also there and he asked Martin Green and Chris Drever how the project came from an idea to a reality. Well, I used to play with Chris and Chris used to play with Aidan. So we amalgamated these to make the travel easier. And how long ago was that? Was that a long time ago? 18 months ago. Uh, but I hear you, well, you're going down to London and you're touring all over April. That's right, yeah. We're, we're all over England like a rash during April. And then uh, in Scotland during October. Chris Drever has just joined us. Tell us, Chris, yes. how did you feel tonight? How did you feel it went? We had a lovely time. We're very glad. You know, it's it's the, the equivalent of smashing a bottle on a ship, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Delighted that it's away. Quite amazing, uh, actually. I mean, knowing the musicians and actually seeing Martin play the way that he did on the box, I thought... Uh, Martin was in really good form. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Nice to hear someone actually giving it a bit with folk music for a change, I really must say. I've only just come to Edinburgh this evening and I'm most impressed to find that being playing out there. Oh my gosh, the guy with the accordion, his hair is amazing. I've never rocked out to an accordion like that guy. Like I could rock out to that guy. And the guy with the fiddle is also amazing. Well, let, let, let's. Less about the hair, more about the music, okay. if you don't mind. <laughs> well, the music went with the hair. I mean, it was really good, and 
uh, very exciting, and I really like the Butcher Boy song, and he gave us a free CD of the Butcher Boy song, so I'm very excited. So basically what we're saying is we like the style and we like the sound. Yes, it was it was excellent. It rocked, man. It's like, it all really came together. We brought a lot of folk down who had never seen anything like this before, and went, they were like, is this folk music? It rocks. Exactly. It's, de it's definitely sort of faster, louder, more powerful folk music, stuff you can really dance to, get your... The way I personally find it should be, really. There's guys that come down and they're like, this is not their thing, but I swear to one or two of them come down and they're like, they're amazing. They're mainly like these guys are hardcore virtuosos. It was fantastic. It was really good. It was full of life and shows that folk music can take a whole new kind of approach to things. And the voices in that uh, wee clip there were from Ivor, Paul, Beth, Mike the Legend and Kirsty. While the show was extremely well received, not everyone was blown away by the loud sound. Oh? Mmm. Angle spoke to Riley Briggs from Aberfeldy. Very progressive. At times it was um, transported almost yeah. in a reality with all the time changes and stuff. I think they should really stop doing that because they're going to freak out the folkies. They're too prog, too progressive. You don't think there's a, a young crowd of folkies that are really ready to get their teeth into it? There probably is an uh, audience for this kind of math folk. That's what I would call it. Math trad. <laughs> okay. Can I just disassociate myself with that? <laughs> what kind of trad was it? Math, Math trad. trad. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm not sure quite where he's coming from. <laughs> anyway, for uh, Lau gig listings and album purchases, see Lau, that's leu-music.co.uk. Moving on with the folk in news. For the first time since its creation in the late 1950s, the Edinburgh University Folk Society have made a decision to move operations to Edinburgh's Royal Oak. The Royal Oak has been a standard bearer for the folk scene inside and out of Edinburgh, so it seems only fitting that it's opened its doors to some of Edinburgh's mm. finest young traditional musicians. After much discussion and deliberation, the Folk Society met for the first time in the Royal Oak on Tuesday the 20th March to bring a trial separation from its home in the Pleasance. By all accounts, the evening went, went very well, but as yet, the garden sessions cannot confirm whether any permanent decision has been taken. We can't. Angles, again our roving reporter, spoke to Folk Sock member Chris Silver and asked him about the ethos and history of Folk Sock. Well, uh, next year it'll be in its 50th year. It was originally founded, of course, by the great Hamish Henderson back in when he was uh, working at Edinburgh University. And uh, it has like um, sort of 50 years of, uh, of history to sort of back it up in that sense. And I mean, the, uh, it's, it's moved from like, various locations. At one point, apparently, it was even... It used, it used to meet in a church crypt, apparently, at one stage. Of course, now it's based down at 48A, the Pleasance. What prompted this sort of trial separation from the Pleasance? What prompted the move to the Oak? I, it originated with, of course, the, with, with Tom Harland, actually. I think he was the original person to, to moot the idea, um, and which would have been like you know, some, at some point last year. And ever since then, we've been looking for a date that would actually suit both of us, especially because like with a, we had a very large influx of people at the start of this academic year. And the result of which is we had to move down to a larger room than we normally use. And that larger room is very sort of echoey and drafty and really lacking in atmosphere. And we thought, well, you know, we have a an idea, a, an ideal location just up the road in the form of the Royal Oak. And um, it would be great just to sort of move out of that um, um, in, into a new kind of setting. Um, and I think the Royal Oak has like proved to be an ideal setting, especially in that you know it's got a similar. There, there are two um, Edinburgh folk institutions, or well, you can really call them institutions, or most sort of loose kind of groups that um, provide a wonderful ability to like uh, play accessible music to um, to people that are prepared to listen. Was that our very own Tom Harland credited in there? <laughs> Are you a mover or a shaker in the folk scene in Edinburgh? I think he's a drinker, Jack. <laughs> Just a drinker, Jack. <laughs> anyway, keep up to date with all the latest folky news at gardensessions.co.uk forward slash news. And that's the folky news. Um, Angles, it's about time that we got the top ten. Are you going to let us into anything more than you did earlier? Not at all, no, no, no. It's so close, you're just going to have to wait those extra few minutes. Give me it, Angles. The official garden session download chart. The official garden session download chart. 
This is the official Garden Sessions download chart based on free downloads from gardensessions.co.uk. It's a wonderful website. It is indeed. <laughs> and at 10, it's down one for the Laurie Watson 3 with Cape on Tree. At 9, it's a re-entry for Doghouse Roses with Namat and Back in. Uh, at 8, it's down 5 for Four Chords and the Truth with Old Men Fall in Love. Ooh, 7, ooh. down 2 for Martin Boland with Dreams in Blue. She wears a coat of many colours Everyone the brightest hue Shimmering silver and burnished bronze That's only how it seems to you Cause when she dreams To her it seems she dreams in blue The Great Belanda Did you say down? Down two, indeed. Oh, goodness. At six, it's also down two for Claire Mann and Aaron Jones with Saints and Sinners. Five, mm. it's a re-entry for the Laurie Watson three with When Maggie Gangs Away. At four, it's up four for Four Chords and the Truth with Bonnie Susie Cleland, The Wedding Real, Hannah's Real and MacArthur's Road. Well, they're not done too badly. Well, I find a bonnie wee boy. There's still no sign of Jim Malcolm. Indeed, I can't there remember isn't. one. I have to wait and see what's happening. He could happened still there. be at the top spot. At three, it's up three for Sinead Connolly. No matter what I do, she keeps moving back <laughs> up the chart. It's Eileen Oak. At two, it's a non mover for Andy Chung with the Wee Room. And that means. Oh! Ooh, what is it Malcolm? It's not Malcolm. Oh. Malcolm's not only disappeared from number one, he's disappeared from the chart entirely because oh. the official Garden Sessions download chart number one is up two for Andy Chung with the Penny Fox. Again! Again Chung he's back. and Silver dance. It always flew my parents. 
his hands So I go with his heart to my commands But the nuns I could never understand Under Jesse Dealey's wings I'll learn to dance I'll be coming to strike some piece of luck Playing on the penny falls For the now is turned back to dust Here it says that's all Pockets full of jingling change Playing on the penny falls Long summer days to waste away Till my mother calls Best is feeling of all Here it is, that's all Playing on the penny falls Angles, give me some stats. How many times has Andy Chung been at the Garden Sessions number one? It's been so many, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm afraid I can't give you the stats straight away. But That's I would how say closely he watches these. He's charts, up with. Folks. He's up with. He's up with Frank. It's around about seven now. I'd say bestest feeling of all. Andy Chung, the Penny Falls, the current Garden Sessions number one, the gold standard in <laughs> folk. Um, right, we say that a lot. Though. Dave, your angle is coming up next. Um, we're getting quite close to it, so you can maybe give us a wee hint, just something, just a wee teaser. No. Nothing? Nothing. Uh, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. Our featured artist later on, Tom. Our featured artist is Carolyn and Nona Scott. That's all still to come. You listen to the Garden Sessions, Angles, website and email. Uh, website is www.gardensessions.co.uk. Email podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. And what can you do at that website, Tom? You can download all the best in uh, new songwriting and traditional folk music, Jack. And listen to this very show. It really is a one-stop shop for folkies. Yes. The Anamasi Band. Dave, the Anamasi Band. The Anamasi Band. Um, 
Anna Massey, I went to school with actually. Um, had fiddle lessons with her and stuff like that. Credentials of the Angles. Um, Giving away your youthful age there as well. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yes, uh, the the Anna Massey band are Anna Massey, um, Jen Butterworth, who we played earlier, and Maria Ad Green, um, Mm. I believe is how you pronounce her first name. Sorry if I've got it wrong. Um, And good credentials. Uh, One thing's like uh, BBC Radio Scotland, Young Traditional Musician of the Year, 2003, all that kind of stuff. Hardcore credentials. Um, and really good, really good tunes, really good stuff. All of it. Is it angle time? It is indeed. Oh, God. What is your angle this week, Dave? Um, the angle this week, as I said, it's a special surprise for Tom. Oh. Uh, Can we just remind listeners, actually, because um, we haven't actually described what the angle is for a very, very long time, and there may be listeners who don't actually know what the format is. The angle is where we take a traditional or Elaborate, Jack. contemporary song, and angles presents us with it and then tells us the story. That is um, within that song. Mm. Um, As they oftentimes are, usually Jack and Tom don't know what it is, uh, and this is a, a, a bit of a special surprise because it's one of Tom's favourites. I want I believe, uh, He uh, he um, spoke to Kate Rusby during the uh-huh. Celtic Connections None about a particular tune, which was Cobbler's Daughter. Uh-huh. Could you just tell us briefly what the story is behind that song, Cobbler's Daughter, how it came about? I I have a I have a great load of um, old ballad books that I've kind of found over the years from various towns in, in second hand bookshops in the dusty corners and um, and I just found found the song or found the so- the story of the song in one of these ballad books and then created a song around it really and because I just loved the story I thought it was quite funny so I thought I need to do something with that and it didn't have a tune and it wasn't quite finished the song so I thought I'll expand on it and create a whole new song from it so Oh, it's a lovely yeah. song. I think it's quite good. I think it's quite funny. Is that what, that's what I think. Oh, it's really. funny, yeah. But you're very kind to say it. I am a cobbler's daughter. I'm thought of a road and bean. But to find her on a body, a loss where you have never seen. I've plagued my father's head. For my life, I wouldn't wed. My mother's in the prison cause of me. I was a handsome young man who used to live by me If I went out, if I went in, he'd always follow me I know I don't rue the day, and it happened as I say I took him to my chamber room to see I took him to my chamber where we could be alone And knowing that my mother rang, my father were at home He's kissed me on the cheek I screamed till I was weak My father came running to the show He jumped upon the young man As I was standing by But he brought his fist behind He said and he stumped him in the eye My mother heard the din Up the stairs she did begin With a broom for a weapon she had Straightway, my mother, she was waiting like a raging bull. I'd say she's hit him on the head, and the young man fell like lead, quite dead upon the floor. He lay. Broadcasting from the Bothy in Edinburgh, this is the Garden Sessions, gardensessions.co.uk, and that's Kate Roosby and the Cobbler's Daughter. What with, a tune. With Tom talking to Kate Roosby beforehand. She sounds like a lovely lass. Oh, she is. Good choice, Angle, this man. Good choice of Angle. What's your Angle? Mm-hmm. Well, we're straight off into it. Dangerous territory. Uh, we're presented with a Cobbler's Daughter. 
Ah, quite dangerous. Always though. trouble. Young, folky women. Uh, and basically, explains in the first verse, she's a cobbler's daughter, and everyone thinks she's rude and a bit mean. Mm. Um, but she's really quite good looking. Um, was she the star of the bar, Dave? Uh, she probably was in her day. Good. <laughs> um, but she's been basically. She says she's she's played. I've played my father's head. She's been getting on her dad's nerves basically because she refuses to marry. She just refuses to get married. Um, and then it turns out that she's managed to get her mother sent to prison. Her mother sent to prison. How? Yes. She's not well, a family last then. No, she's <laughs> she's not big on the on the bonds of of of, of maternity. And what and have blood. you? No. Um, well, basically, there was this guy, right? This handsome young man, and he he uh, he used to sort of um, hang around, mm. kind of thing. He obviously quite fancies her, you know. He's obviously interested. Just loitering about. Yeah, she says that um, whenever he, whenever whenever she would go out or whenever she would come back, he'd always sort of follow her around and kind of stuff. Stalking. Yeah, he's a bit of a stalker. He's maybe got you know a bit, a bit too far involved in this kind of thing. <laughs> um, and uh, or is but, maybe but, does he not just fancy her though? Yeah, he just. I mean, it's it's fairly innocent at this stage. I mean, okay. he's he's, he's can not happen. made any moves or anything like that because he's been given no indication to do so. But then one day she decides, you know what? I'm going to take him upstairs. I'm going to take I'm going to take him oh, upstairs brilliant. to the bedroom. Yeah. So oh, nice, nice. His persistence paid off. Yeah, in other words, good, good on the young man. Exactly, yeah. you know, the handsome young man. Yeah. Um, he's done all right. Um, see, this is where the trouble starts, though. What trouble could possibly come well, of this situation? She, she, she took him up to her bedroom, so so they could so they could be alone, and and um, she knows fine well that her that her parents are at home. Um, they're just downstairs, you know. They're having a cup of tea, some 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 lunch, what have you. Um, and um, because he's been encouraged, you know, he's been taken up to her bedroom. He's followed her around for ages, and finally she's showing him some interest. He leans in and gives her a wee peck on the cheek. Oh, fairly innocent stuff. Nice, fairly yeah. innocent okay. stuff. But she starts screaming her lungs out. What? Oh no. She starts going. She for you no. Know, she just completely chops, changes around. He gives her a peck on the cheek because she he's she's taking her, him up to her bedroom. And this I is back in the day, you know. Taking, I don't taking the man up to your bedroom was a big man. thing. So hold on. Um, she's taking him to her bedroom. Yes. He pecks her on the cheek and, and she screams. Screaming. And she's oh, screaming. Dear. <sighs> Poor handsome young man. <clears throat> well, her dad hears. This is the problem. You see, her dad oh, hears. Oh no, it gets worse. And he oh. comes oh, screaming up the stairs, thinking his daughter's being violated. Mm. You know. Which is not. <laughs> Which she's not. At she's all. just, just kicking up anyway, the stairs. He comes. He comes. He comes. Oh, you know, dear. screaming up the stairs, full pelt. Um, oh, no. And he and he just jumps on this guy. He just jumps <laughs> he on him. Jumped up on the young man. Yeah. Um, and whilst she was standing by, she's standing there, and, and she doesn't she do, do anything. Does she defend the no, person no, no. she's lured to she a not chamber? Say, she doesn't Father. do anything. She doesn't Easy. say, "Hold that, hold on, calm down." I mean, to be fair, she doesn't get the chance to because as soon as her dad jumps on him, he automatically reacts, as you might when a big angry man jumps on you by by you defending himself with a with a punch, you know, and punches her dad in in the eye, gives him a big black eye, and sort of lays him out on the on the ground. Good for the young man. Yeah. So he's defended himself. He's been jumped on by a big guy. He defends himself. And he gets Fair up. And well, he, he hasn't done anything wrong. Exactly. So. He's not done anything wrong. And he immediately gets up and legs it. He's thinking, I'm out of here. This girl's yeah, nuts. That, that, that's the first sensible decision that the handsome young man's to made just thus far. Yeah. Get the hell out of there and just, you know, tear it's it up the difficult to road. put into words, really. Um, Straight into the nearest equivalent of Sandy Bells where they all can have a good stiff whiskey. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Calm the old nerves Forget down. the whole thing. Problem is, he hasn't got a clear run at the exits because her mother's heard the noise. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. I thought her mother was in jail. Well, this is, you see, this is how her mother ends up in jail. See? <laughs> ah. Because she's heard the noise, you know, and she comes running up to the, to the stairs and she's got a broom, you know, because all she's heard is her daughter screaming and then the huge clatter of her husband getting into this fight and now she hears someone coming running down the stairs. Right. So she runs up to the stairs with this broom held aloft above <laughs> to her head. To be fair to the mother, the mother is none the wiser to anything that's going the on mother has and no it idea will what's sound pretty There's bad. only one exactly. guilty party in Cobbler's Daughter. Yeah, and that's the and Cobbler's Daughter. And the name daughter. says it all. <laughs> but, um, well... You, you could argue there's two guilty party because when, when her mother sees this guy running down the stairs after all this noise, she beats him to death with her broom. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but from the mother's point of view, she doesn't know what's happened and it would sound pretty she bad. She still commits a murder, though. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. He was headed true. for the exit. Yeah. He was. <laughs> but you never um, know what he had done. She hasn't seen what happened to her husband. So, and stuff, her, so the mother's position is maybe defensible, uh, especially uh, in the, the realms of The whole situation politics. has been manipulated by the cobbler's daughter. Exactly. So that's the Garden Sessions Tribunal <laughs> yeah. on the sun. Cobbler's daughter, I think, should probably get a few years. Yeah, Everyone exactly. else should be pardoned. Yeah. 
That's the way it would work in and my And a monument mind. should be raised to the handsome young man. <laughs> Indeed. For, for, being of, for being of good stock and values. <laughs> Dave, what's, uh, what's the moral? Uh, the moral of this one, I think, is that uh, if, if you cause trouble, then it's not just you that suffers. It's kind of, you know, don't, don't cry wolf because it's other people that have to, have to suffer the consequences. And bear the brunt. Yeah. And also, um, but she's and, and also, she if, doesn't if, care. If, uh, the other one is a, a, a note of warning to all young men, to, to all young men out there. If you fancy someone and they show you that, and they show you interest after you ages of trying for no apparent reason, if they're r- r- rather don't, over don't, aware of their own good looks. Yeah, don't trust them. <laughs> don't go to their <laughs> chamber rooms. No. Yeah, not unless you've got like contracts signed and things. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that's a garden one. sessions take on that. Dave, is that your angle? It is indeed. Mm-hmm. Well, before we go to our featured artist this week, it's time for the letters bag. And we still don't have a jingle. We would need to get Frank Burkett onto the case on this one. Frank Jingles Burkett. A letters bag jingle. He, he's the best in the business. The best in the business. And he does some good songs as well. Um, Tom, you've got the first letter there. Mm, this is from Carla um, in Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. And she writes, Hello, I haven't left a message on the feedbacks area since the last Edinburgh Festival. I'm still well. a regular listener and was pleased to hear that you teamed up with Radio Britfolk, who I also listen to. Your shows get better every time I listen. I truly can't get enough of the garden sessions, especially Dave's angle, of course. Thank you very much, mm-hmm. Carla. <laughs> last year's Edinburgh Festival specials made my festival. Steady. <laughs> I don't know, they were the final jigsaw piece in the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> will you be going weekly again this year? Jack, you could probably answer that. Of course we will. Is Tom going on another folk odyssey? Tom, you can answer that. I could answer that. Yeah, I certainly will be, yes. A two-year folk odyssey around the world. Goodness, a more information about odyssey. that to come. Mm, indeed. And will Frank be back again? Frank will we'll indeed be, be back, back again. Um, the next time we can guarantee that you'll hear from him will be on the festival shows, but I'm sure he'll crop up no. before then. As Come he on now, Jack. We'll be doing something to celebrate our birthday. Indeed, the it birthday wouldn't be bash. the birthday without Frank. So. And Frank, of course, popped up on the show today. Yeah, mm. We heard him earlier. Keep on folking anyway, says Carla. Angles, you got a letter? Yes, I do, Tom. And it says, uh, Dear Garden Sessions, I uh, don't know who wrote the song Willie's Gone to Melville Castle, but if it's about William, William Creech, uh, it was probably mm. inspired by Burns. This was the um, contest we opened up last week after Andy ah. Chung's thing uh, to find out who wrote Willie's Gone to Melville Castle. But anyway, it goes on to say, um, my guess is it's just another anonymous Borders ballad. So unfortunately, and that's Alan Foster. I think um, I know that, that man. <laughs> um, we can't actually award the prize because we yeah. still don't know who yeah. wrote the tune. I mean, if it was inspired by Burns, then... Mm, give us a, then if we can get definite on that, then how have you been getting on um, and finding out about it? I've not been getting on too well. Um, the any leads? Well, this was this was my my first major lead, which I which I delved into, but I couldn't get of any course, further. Alan Foster is the writer of the literary traveller in Scotland. Well, as mm. I say, this gave me this gave me my first lead. Yeah, I looked I've... into William Creech and found out some stuff about him, but mm. I couldn't get a definite. What did you find out about William Creech? Uh, 1745 to 1815, he was a bookseller and publisher. He published the second edition of Burns' poems. Angles, you are Edinburgh literally edition, encyclopedic. In <laughs> <laughs> if the Garden Sessions researcher can't find it, then who can? Well, that's the letters bag anyway, and that contest is still open to the masses. Who wrote Well, He's Gone to Melville Castle? We just don't know at this stage. But Angles is on it. It's time for our featured artist slot this week. Um, who's Carolyn Anona Scott. Um, I met up with her on Sunday afternoon, downstairs in the Royal Oak, and this is what we pulled together. Same old feel, same old time. 
smile creeping onto the faces memories fall into place smarted by nostalgia thinking back thinking far ahead far ahead far Smile creeping onto the faces Memories fall into place Crowded by nostalgia Thinking back, thinking far ahead Far ahead Far ahead Far ahead, far ahead. Far ahead. Far ahead. Far ahead. Excited the prospects of a life So far ahead, far ahead, far ahead, far ahead, far ahead. That's Carolyn and Nona Scott, this week's featured artist on the Garden Session, singing Far Ahead or Going Home. Uh, I think it's gone through a couple of name changes. Welcome along to the Garden Sessions, Carolyn. Tell us a little bit about that song, first of all. I understand it started life as a Christmas song. Um, yeah, the, my friend Andy, who's a guitarist I write songs with quite often, mm-hmm. he's just came out with this little riff about three days before Christmas, just the day before I was going home to the parents' house for Christmas. And um, I fell in love with the riff and immediately mm. decided I wanted to sing along to it. Um, so I started kind of writing songs and it, it turned out kind of about going home and the feeling you get about going home for Christmas time. And so when I went home, I had kind of uh, not quite enough money to buy everybody a Christmas present, so I just played them all a little song and incorporated kind of my family into the song. But home, then home being? Uh, Dunfermline. Dunfermline, uh, a Pfeiffer. Yeah, sadly, I, I tried to hide it. <laughs> yeah, no, but after Christmas, obviously, I wanted to continue playing the song and had to edit the lyrics a little bit mm. and um, get rid of all the Christmas parts. <laughs> And so now it's just generally a song about going home for any kind of nice occasion or going back to visit. Um, your songs, the lyrics of your songs all seem to have quite sort of personal stuff running through them. How did you sort of start songwriting? and What was it that kind of drove you on to start writing songs? Um, I think I started writing poetry more because when I was younger I never thought I could sing and wasn't really good enough on the guitar to write music but um, I used to love just sitting and write poetry about kind of the area I lived in and we had nice fields and things and I love writing about the the changes in seasons and things mm. mainly I started writing poetry to get out of having to write essays in English because mm. um, you could get away with writing three verses as opposed to three pages in an essay um, and from there I, when I got a little bit better on the guitar I started kind of turning them into songs mm. um, I can't really sing anything that doesn't mean something to me I find it really difficult to get into a song that I don't personally feel something about. Mm. Um, and, I mean, do you do covers at all? I do. I do covers that I can relate to, covers that I like and the lyrics mean something to me. Is that purely to appease audiences? Or? Mainly. Like, um, <laughs> like, there's some places where you've just got to do covers, like mm-hmm. in and around Edinburgh, there's some places that crowds just don't really want to hear original material. It's um, useful to have some Johnny Cash up your sleeve it sometimes. It certainly is. Uh, Johnny Cash is one artist that I'll happily cover um, any day. I love his music. The bad news for any listeners who were hoping to hear a bit of Johnny Cash is that we're not going to hear any <laughs> um, on the show this week. But um, the second song that you're going to sing for us is called Endless Peace. And it tells a brief bit about why you've chosen to sing that one. 
this was the first song I wrote that I really liked. Um, when I started singing, which wasn't that long ago, and got into songwriting, there was so many songs that I would write and just throw away. Um, this one was kind of inspired by that kind of natural high I got when I was at a Buddhist monastery, of all places, um, yeah. standing in the middle of a river. Um, and I just that unbelievable natural high you can get sometimes. Um, and whenever I play it now, it kind of takes me back to that and it makes me I like, I like to sit and play it in my room if I'm ever kind of so this was great. written in a Buddhist monastery in a sense yeah the first verse um, was written in a Buddhist monastery and then about probably about a year later I um, picked up an old book that had that verse in it and was reminded of it all and decided mm. to write a little piece of music well let's listen to that now um, this is Endless Peace <laughs> Carolyn Anona Scott, Endless Peace, and I'm with Carolyn now downstairs in the Royal Oak, the Grand Old Opera Folk, um, for the Garden Sessions featured artist uh, this week. We're going to talk a little bit now about a project which you've been working on for a while called Never Ending Arts. Uh, for those who don't know what Never Ending Arts is, um, if you could let them in on the. Well, I um, when I got heavily into my music, decided that university was certainly a big mistake. Um, I was studying physics and thought, well, stuff this, i got to get out of here. Mm. Um, looked around Edinburgh and saw there's just an unbelievable amount of talent in the creative arts in Edinburgh, um, but so much of it goes completely unseen. And um, I guess Never Ending Arts really is just a way to promote real talent and mm -hmm. try and give artists the chances they need to, uh, to excel in their fields. And it's not um, specifically folk music um, that it's, it's based around, though, is it? Not even specifically music. Um, music's the main thing right now because it's the easiest thing to get off the ground for mm -hmm. me because it's where 
like I'm a musician, so it's yeah. easier for me to deal with the music side. But we are moving into art exhibitions and um, allowing people to come and giving them the materials they need to make artwork mm -hmm. and then giving them gallery space and just taking back the money that we need for the materials after we sell their art on. Do you um, find that it's easy to get the spaces and the venues in Edinburgh? I've been extremely lucky. Um, like really lucky to have just gone out like mad and networking and met some really good people um, who have given me some excellent chances to make it happen. And the, there's a website for that? Yeah, that's just uh, neverendingarts.co.uk. And is there not a MySpace as well? Uh, there is, just myspace.com slash neverendingarts. Never They're both arts. a little bit under construction. The website has all details of the gigs that we're putting on in the next couple mm -hmm. of months. We're going to move on to your last song, um, which is called Sitting High. It's a song I wrote a very long time ago. Well, yeah, when I was about 15 or 16, it was written as a piece of poetry. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I like the lyrics myself. Um, it was kind of the first piece of poetry I wrote that, that I decided to turn into a song um, because it had that kind of rhythm to it and it had a flow to it. And um, I just, yeah, it was probably one of the first songs that I fully wrote and put together myself. And yeah. um, I've been playing it ever since. And yeah, the lyrics can be a little bit kind of uh, possibly, you can tell I'm a child, they're a little bit kind of overly. Ah, you the philosophical tend to look back and cringe at any lyrics written in the yeah. past. Though, I think it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of um, not quite religious but spiritual aspects to it, because mm. um, that's just something that means a lot to me. And I do really enjoy playing it because I get a good feeling when I play it. Yeah. I know it's not one of my strongest songs, though, but um, I still mm -hmm. like it and always will. Thanks very much to this week's featured artist, Carolyn Anona Scott. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Cheers. <laughs>
Carolyn Anona Scott, mm. this week's featured artist on the Garden Sessions, and some lovely tunes there. Rumour, was there not that uh, Susanna or Holland, one of our former featured artists, and Carolyn would be uh, performing a, s- a set together in the Oak. Have we got a date confirmed for that, Jack? Um, I don't think we do as yet, or the Garden Sessions hasn't obtained it, but it's coming up soon. It's mm. this month. We'll keep um, you posted on the Nona Folk Scott News. And another former f- Garden Sessions featured artist, Susanna or Holland. Yeah. Um, a little quick kind of note, though, to listeners as well, which we almost forgot to mention. For those hardcore Garden Sessions listeners that have um, listened to the show as soon as it's gone up, Tonight, being Tuesday, um, you can head along to the Royal Oak and it's the One Foot in the Grave tour for ah. Idle Beggars. Um, the Martin Boland and Ian Robertson and co. Oh, and it should be good. Should I'll be, be there. Will you, Angles? <laughs> It'll be fun. I probably will, yes. It should be a pound in evening. That's at the Royal Oak on Infirmary Street. Royal-Oak-Folk.com Ah, goodness. Podcast! <laughs> Time to cart the whiskey. Ah. <laughs> We've come to the end. <laughs> Coming up next week, Tom. We've got all the regular stuff. Dave's angle. Hopefully it'll be as great a song as it was this week, Angles. Well, I've been raking through trying to find if I can get one of Jack's favourites, but I haven't been able to find one yet. Maybe mm. by next time. Mm. We'll see Let's how see that happens. goes. Official Garden Sessions download chart number one. The letters bag. The folky news. Will Chung still be at one? Will he indeed? All the (laughs) usual stuff. Angles, how do people get in touch with the garden sessions and find out more and so on? Uh, If you want to find out more or get in touch, you can uh, go to the website. It's www.gardensessions.co.uk. There's all the information, all the reviews and news, um, feedback form, all that kind of stuff. And if you want to get in touch with us directly, it's podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. And we'll be back in two weeks' time. Join us. Till then, I'm Jack Foster, Tom Harlan, Dave the Angles Gimble. Cheerio. Catch you later down the Folky Trail. See you later. Mm.